Welcome, Ray, to another edition of TW 2020, as it's time to continue on the road to Super Brawl, as it's time for another set of Saturday Night Tapings, as let's get rolling, as the answer is part of the fact. Both Tony and Jesse put over that it's going to be just Sting and Sid tonight, versus Sid tonight, where, you know, if Sting gets the win over Sid, he gets the international world title shot at the British Bulldog at Super Brawl. So 74, decent for that. We are opening match, we're in a decent match, meaning Vegas and Scotty Flamingo defeat JW Storm and Van Hammer in 756 when Flamingo pinned Van Hammer. This is what using their fillers. What happens is, you know, things break down, uh, a chair gets slid in, Flamingo hits a, a quick DDT on Van Hammer on the chair, chair gets slid back out, and Flamingo gets the big win, uh, for 61, as Flamingo gets a 51, Vegas gets a 57, Van Hammer gets a 43, JW Storm gets a 61, and post match, Flamingo and Vegas celebrate to 55. As Ventura says, you know, basically, you know, looking at that, Flamingo and Vegas deserve another shot at the tag titles that Scorpio and Simmons hold. Well, you know, Shredden tries to brush that off. Uh, then we go backstage where basically, you know, Vader is, is pacing, you know, sort of like angry, you know, doing you know, his shadow boxing thing. Harley tries to calm him down, says, you know, you're going to win back that title champ over the other one. These past two months have nothing but a fluke and that you're going to be the man again. Because you deserve to be the man. Because you're the baddest man in this company. And nobody can stop you for more than a moment. Who's the man? I'm the man, Vader says. And yeah, Cash Section is in action tonight. But if he goes too far, I will squash him like a bug before Super Raw. It's Vader time. 24, solid promo. And there we go. As we have Super Raw Controls on which you know goes over Root versus the Steamboat. And Big Ben Vader versus Cash Jack for the... With WCW heavyweight title announced. As this gets a 7 1. We go to our next match, which is in a decent match, the Cross Atlantic Confederation of Chris Benoit, Bobby Eaton, and CB Rigo defeats Matt Mike Graham, Eric Watts, and Iceman King Parsons in 938. When Benoit submits Eric Watts with a Coopler crossface, uh, this gets a 53, Parsons gets a 34, Watts gets a 31, Graham gets a 40, so not bad for basically just a notch above total jobbers. Uh, CB Rigo gets a 67, Eaton gets 61, Benoit gets a 73. Uh, is this just the... yeah, okay. And then post-match, it looks like there's going to be a beatdown again by the Cross-Atlantic Confederation. But then out of nowhere, some, you know, the country rock hits, and out comes the return of Rock and Country after a couple weeks off for Brian Armstrong after he got injured, as they run down with some chairs, basically, like, you know, scaring away uh, Benoit, Eaton, Regal, as a standoff as we go to commercial. Uh, this gets a 57, it's all stuff. You know, base rock clerk. You know, this is a nice little, fun little undercard technique feud. Uh, then we have a Sid promo where you know, he says, I am still the master in Ruler tonight, and tonight I destroy Sting once and for all. Then he uses crazy Sid laugh, and there you go. Uh, you know, 73, solid stuff. And then in a decent match, Johnny Bad defense his WCW World Television title between Max Payne and 905 by Pinfall the Wild Thing. I think that's 450, I think. As uh, so this gets a 56. You bad get Johnny gets a 59, Max Payne gets a 40, and then post match, Jacques Rougeau runs in and just drills uh bad from behind, you know, with a close on from behind, and just you know goes to lock on the Quebec Crab uh before WC officials run in and bring him off as you know Rougeau says you know he deserves the next TV title shot. As this gets a 51. And then we have a big Austin Slaughter confrontation, you know, basically, you know, Slaughter, you know, Slaughter comes down, basically calls out Austin. You know, he, you know, Slaughter asks for explanation, puke, for why you attack me. And Austin says, well, it's pretty simple. There should be a new era in World Championship Wrestling. But yet what I saw, what we all saw back in the internet from the room was another jackass dinosaur showing up and taking what should be ours. And, you know, Slaughter fights back, well, you're a puke, Megan. I've dealt with puke. Punks like you, that my entire career, and even back on Paris Island when you were nothing but a gleam in your daddy's eye. Austin says, that's exactly right. You've been around this business for so long. There are men who could be your children in that restaurant now. And you should walk away before we make you walk away. Sutter fights back, make me. And there's a stare down for an hour. Brian Pillman slides in, talks Sutter from behind. Looks like it's a two-on-one beatdown. When Dustin Rose comes out to make the save, and, you know, we have a fun little brawl before these officials, you know, uh, break things up, as this gets a 76. Solid stuff. Awesome is stale, but, you know, we can fix that a little bit here. As in a, uh, extremely short match, Rory Hawk and Tsumami squash the Gambler and Robbie V in 321 when Hawk pins Robbie V with the big boot. Uh, this gets a 40, Tsumami gets 67, 
Hawk gets a 66, Robbie V gets a 39, Gambler gets a 35. And then we have a quick Hawk and Swimming promo where they basically, you know, uh, put over, you know, they're ready for a fight anytime. And if the rest of Iron Horsemen actually want to face them in that ring, they'll, they'll be happy to, you know, t- take a fight at any time because the wave is coming for them. Ooh, what a rush. 66, solid stuff. And then we have basically, uh, oh my god. What is with rotator cuff tears in this, in this game right now for me? We have Flare. We have Carino in my other company. Oh my god. Like, this might be real bad. Anyway, extremely short match. Rick Flair uh, defeats Rip Rogers in 451 by pinball. Just, like, slaps on him. Uh, so he just actually goes up top and hits his finisher. Gets a 68. Uh, Flair gets an 89. Roger gets a 40. Uh-huh. And then uh, we have a segment where for Rick Flair... Uh, get, does a quick promo cutting a 69, says that what you just saw was excellent in action, and the obviously that's what you're gonna have to deal with at Super Raw. Because, whoo, 12 times I've held up that, to be, that world championship all over this world. Well, you've had to buy your own son. So, DiBiase, take your money, take your riches, but in the one, we're in the room together, you're gonna have, it's gonna be mano and mano, and everybody knows I'm the man, and you're not gonna be able to beat the man. So, I'll promo as we move forward. As about the grid heat and decent wrestling, WCW uh, heavyweight champion Cactus Jack defeats Simone Savage in 1029 by pinfall to the Double Arm DT. So, you know, Savage gets a little bit of a fight back, but Cactus is Cactus and he's able to hit the Double Arm DT. Hit the win, this gets a 73. Cactus Jack gets an 80. Savage gets it gets a 44. Uh, Cactus Jack cuts a promo. You know, basically, says, you know, this title belt means I'm the best wrestler in the company, and there's people who don't want to admit that, <laughs> and people want to pretend not to believe it. And want to focus on other things in their life, but every no, everyone knows that I'll bleed for this title. I'll go into pain for this title. I'll break bones to keep this title. And this is the only thing that matters to me. And you've all seen what I've done just in regular matches. But to tell this title, I'll do absolutely anything to make sure people remember that Cactus Jack is the hev- is the heavyweight champion. So Vader, I think you're the man. But the question is, buddy, are you only going to help me just be the man again? Bang bang, out comes Vader, and with stare down uh, to go to commercial, which gets an 81. Solid stuff. Then we have our uh, quick Sting promo before the main event. As Sting basically says, you know, yeah, people have been asking me if I'm afraid or if I'm ready for this match. And reality is, buddy, guys, I'm not ne- afraid. I'm not nervous. Because I can't be for one second in the ring with a monster like Sid. All I can do is think about is revenge and glory. Revenge against that big old lunkhead Sid for all the trouble he's caused me the last couple months, and then she has to become international world champion. So, ow! Oh, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to whoop some butt, and then I'm going to take the title off Bulldog. And maybe knock some sense around. He walks away. 70, good stuff. And then in our actual match, we get to 74, which is a little worse than I thought it would be, but still not in the world. About that, fantastic heat, fantastic heat and great wrestling. Sid defeated Sid Vicious by 1446 with a fast roll up. So, you know, okay, so I didn't uh, do a fan storyline, which I probably should have been, but not in the world. So, you know, basically, basically Sting Sid match, but in the end, Sid, you know, Sting is basically able to, like, knock Sid into an exposed turnbuckle that Sid removed when he was going for snake eyes on it, roll up Sid in a sort of, like, rolling cradle, and get the 1, 2, 3, of course, Sid kicks out, like, 3.1, but Sting still gets the huge win, and post-match, Bulldog goes to attack him. But Sting basically is able to ready for him after a quick crawl. Sting tosses him over the top as Saturday night ends, which gets a 83. And overall, this this gets a 76. So we'll finish that show. And just so you guys can see at the same time I do, let's look at medical. Okay. Uh, so he can only work angles, but he's out for 55 days, which is really unfortunate. But let's do this. Do, do, do this we'll do the surgery after this taping. So... That wow. Okay. Um That means we can uh okay, actually we're gonna do a pre book a couple matches just because I think it's pretty obvious that they're happening. So slaughter for the US title. We'll pre book that. Uh what's the other match that we basically set up last I mean I think you guys can see that this is also gonna happen is Rhodes Pillman. We need to remove Flair and DiBiase, and, oh, right, I'll remove that after the show, but yeah, um, interesting. Anyway, I'll be back in a second with this taping, which will figure out the flair DiBiase thing, now that DiBiase is, now that Flair is injured, um, and then we'll go for there, 
and I'll be back with that in just a moment. All right, time for the second show of the taping, and it's a very hot start. As basically what happens is we, you know, uh, we basically start with the earlier today, and we start with a like flare with some nondescript WD officials, you know, basically like, you know, meeting with some muckety mucks, and looking like he's going to do a limo, and Flair's like talking not quite in a clear voice, but not quite in total, not kayfabe voice about like, you know, a busy schedule today, but out of nowhere, we see him getting attacked by somebody, and at the moment we see it's Deviasi, and he's just drilling him into the limo, and he actually opens the door of the limo and slams it on the flare, and then he walks away, uh, saying something like, I don't need to buy you off, you know, uh, with his rough Deviasi voice, as, you know, basically, you know, the, we see the camera, like, try to pull people over to get him help, and this gets a 95, and yeah, wow, really good, really good stuff. And basically, you know, 20 years ago, over what happened, Jesse says, well, you know, this is it's not like this isn't something that Ric Flair would have done himself in the past. And he has just to remember, you know, he's a marked man. And he just might not be ready to go at Super Brawl. And if he isn't, well, that's on him. And Tony, of course, is very upset about that. But, you know, what can you do as they throw it to the ring? As they'll be back with more updates on this as the days go by. And we have our opening match as Rocking Country returned to the ring after a couple weeks layoff as they defeat Terry Taylor and Rick Rogers in 730. 722. And Armstrong pins Terry Taylor with the side rush and leg sweep. This gets a 60. Armstrong gets a 60. Johnny gets a 59. Roger gets a 40. Uh, Terry Taylor gets a 49. Then we have a uh, Rocking Country in ring, which is, of course is not the best, but it's a 41. You know, Brad was, you know, Brad got a little, you know, knocked around, but he's better now and ready to take on anybody in the cross line confederation and show him that when united, rock and roll and country cannot be stopped, even by a couple of Brits or somebody who seems lost like Bobby. And this gets a 41 for, for the not great promo, but what can you do when it's Brian Armstrong and Marvin Jannetty? Uh, then we go over a big man event tonight. It's an eight man tag between the Iron Horseman and Hawk Tsunami and Dustin Rhodes and Sergeant Slaughter. So this gets a 67. As then, in an extremely short match, British Bulldog uh, squashes Iceman King Parsons in 346 by pinfall. Uh, it says with military press slam, but yeah, it would have been with Horton, a power slam. As it gets a 58, Bulldog gets a 78, Parsons gets a 34. As Bulldog gets a quick two minute entering promo, basically he says, Sting, it's right, you won the match, but it's Super Brawl. I'm going to prove to you that I should be at the top of this company, and nobody can stop me, not even the franchise. Not even the bloody franchise. 72, good stuff. As then, we have Rick Rude uh, defeating the Vent Barbarian in 733 by Pinball the Rude Awakening. Perfectly just clean win for Rude as he gets a 63. Rude gets a 78. Barbarian gets a 51 as, you know, again, straightforward win for Rude as he gets a solid win. And, you know, Rude has a problem with Martel, uh, where they're basically, you know, which gets a 70. As Rude says, once again, these officials are about, about who should be their main attraction because they don't want to really upset all these whiny little children events and all the pigs who will be upset that a man that looks like this will be their would be their champion instead of a fat slob like Cactus Jack or a quote-unquote family man like Ricky Stevo. Well, after Super Brawl, there will be nothing WC officials can do that will stop me from getting to the top. And this gets a 70. Good stuff. And again, the fact that I haven't been able to book Rude as a top, top guy yet is something I can work as an angle. Uh, then we have a quick match as Scorpio and Simmons beats Eric Watts and Mike Ravens to 337 when Scorpio pins Watts with Scorpio Splash. Uh, Watts completely phone in performance. Okay. Uh, this gets a 44. Uh, Simmons gets a 71. Tuchel gets a 63. Graham gets a 40. Eric Watts gets a 30. And yeah, somebody's getting fired. Uh, bye bye, Eric. Be happy I'm not going to throw you in a match with Vader and tell him to shoot on you. Uh, this gets a 44. And then we have Scorpion and Simmons, you know, as Ventura says, I'm going to actually go talk to Scorpion and Simmons. As Ventura basically you know, puts it to them, you know, that, that, uh, that, Vegas and Flamingo deserve a rematch for the tag title shot. And Scorpion Sims both says, you know, they're not, they're not afraid to, you know, fight anybody. They'll raise roof at Superall against Vegas Flamingo, if that's what WC officials want them to do, but they're fighting champions. So we can officially pre book that uh, for Super Brawl. Titles. Again, I forget. Okay, so they've had. Okay, so they've actually only had. They've had a couple matches, but no real good big matches since September. Okay, so that makes sense. And as for the World Tag Team Champions, we pre booked that, and there you go. 67, perfectly solid promo for both Scorpio and Simmons as we move forward. 
as we have a quick like you know backstage three minute promo as all four guys uh you know put, put over the, their spots you know 69 you know and Wyndham says you know this is just going to be a preview of the match that we're going to have at Super Brawl versus uh Hawk Tsunami, as that's also is officially uh put together. So Arn and Barry. And then you know Austin says, Sodder, you need to be put down like a dog. Well tonight's gonna be the start of putting it down. That was a wrong we're gonna lose champion. Well, like I observe. Prime says, the future starts now. Good stuff. Uh this gets 69 again mostly because it's too short. And then we have a uh, DBOC is is backstage. And he does the rose box up to him and says, What? And you know, DBS is for the captain says, Look, what does he? Shouldn't you be happy after all the fights you've had with Flair that I've knocked a little sense of him, even if you, you've had our issues? And does he says, Well, it's true. Here's the difference between you, between you and Flair, Ted. Me and Flair, yes, we've had our wolves, but at the bottom of it all was a little bit of respect. And you, a dirty little SOB like you, I got no respect for you. But you don't want Flair? You're probably going to ruin your match to having a high match with okay? Yeah, and Flair, DBS just laughs again. Well, here's the thing, Dusty. I want to remind Flair who I've always been. Yes, I've been successful. I'm wealthy. But I walked in the ring the first time as a son of a wrestler, even when I didn't need to. So, yes, I want to remind him, not just of the suits and the fancy cars, but the man who once wore a black glove and caused destruction all over arenas in this country. So if Flair can't wrestle, they'll just have to find some pseudo competition for me Super Brawl because I know the contract I signed and WCW has promised me a match for Super Brawl one way or the other. So let's get to 78 stuff. And then we have a quick review back confrontation. Uh, you know, review what this title shot. Uh, Bad says, you know, the, the kiss doesn't miss, doesn't discriminate by country, and then he basically punches him, and the match is on. 54, good stuff. And then about the good heat and decent wrestling, Jacques Rougeau defeats, shot him to be bad in 143 by pinfall with a handful of tights. Actually, he walled him with Quebec, uh, you know, flag. This gets a 59, uh, Bad gets a 60, Jacques Rougeau gets a 61. And then Rougeau celebrates and makes title bolt motions, pointing at the fall on Bad, as that gets a 50. Uh, then we have the Flamingo Man with their green steamboat, as they're, you know, said, you know, as they're, as Dave Penz was about to announce them as the next World Tag Team Champions. And, you know, Vegas base, you know, Flamingo Bay says, uh, one question, Ricky. Why are you here? Like, shouldn't you be at your retirement home with your kids, with your wife, raising them instead of being stuck about to get your butt kicked by Rick Rude in a couple weeks? You know, um, and, Team much sort of like, you know, and, you know, Vegas are even, I mean, tech words even much better looking than you. You gotta worry about Bonnie, don't you? And Team says, want to, do you need a chop, son? And Vegas, like, just a, like, ooh, Scott Hall scary, you know, I'm scared thing. And, you know, Steve Boda pays his promises, you know, we fought before, we'll probably fight again, but after Super Bowl, we'll have to admit, I'm the better man, and I'll be on to bigger and better things. It'll be for the world title, maybe be US title. It doesn't matter, because the fans are be behind the dragon. 71, decent promo. Never really know what to do with Steamboat promos because he's not the best, but he's still really over, so there you go. And then uh, we have a quick baby face promo. You know, Hawk and Steamboat basically you know, says, Tonight begins the beginning of the wave against Arnett Barry. It's going to end at Super Brawl. So Arnett says, Puke, Austin, you better stand at attention and get ready for your beatdown. This is when Rose says, You want to talk about the future, Pillman? The present is now. That's why I've been a world champion and you have it. 71, good stuff. And now it's main event time. It gets an 81, so really good stuff. Um, and about that fantastic key and great wrestling, Sergeant Slaughter, Dustin Rose, Road Warrior Hawk, and Tsunami pin the Iron Horseman of Iron, Barry Windham, Austin, and Pillman. In 1931, Hawk pinned Barry Windham with a flying clothesline. So, you know, match, as you expect, just devolves down and get into chaos near the end. But Hawk is able to go up to the top, hit the big flying clothesline on Windham, and pin him while everybody else is brawling. It's a big victory for the big faces. As it gets an 81, like I said, Tsunami gets a 66. Hawk gets a 66, Rose gets a 73, Slaughter gets a 70, Pillman because he's Austin awesome, gets an 85, Austin gets a 71, Wyndham gets a 75, and Arn gets an 80. Okay, and then we have a post-match brawl, which gets a 74. And Wyndham's gimmick is also getting stale like Austin. So interesting. Okay, well, we'll, we'll fix both of those things.
And he's going to show up with an 81. Okay, so actually a really good good show. Probably that really hot angle to start out with uh with Flare and DBoss to really start. And yeah, what we'll do is we'll try in a second here when it loads up, we'll go over the mail and we'll try the um yield surgery, see if that helps at all. And then if it, you know, uh, and then we'll go from there to our plan. Because yeah, I mean, uh, let's see here. Do we have enemies? <laughs> Uh, Barry Hardy, what are you doing, buddy? Making okay. Anyway, uh, Rick Flair's injured. Uh, and yeah, let's as a quick note, just so you guys know, Yoshi, with no shame, David Way, he's doing what we're considering. So we'll be, I don't say stuck with him, but you know, we'll have him for a while. And oh, oops, that is a bit of a spoiler, but you know, not the end of the world for anybody that saw that. See what WF did. Big Boss Man defeated Rick Ming Savage, defeating the World Heavyweight Title. Duggan defeated Luger. I'll go ahead and defeat the IRS. Yeah, uh, it's 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 doing weird things. Uh, but yeah, okay, let's go to medical real quick. Ooh, okay, twenty. Oh god, if only, if only it was a little bit longer. But okay, not the end of the world. Um, let's figure out a way to sort of end that. End that. Uh, not too big, but um, yeah, interesting. Anyway, I'll be back in a second with the um, with the with the final go home show before Super Bowl, and then, um, yeah, and then that'll be that. I'll be back in just a moment. All right, it's now time for the go home show for uh, Super Bowl, as we are going to set the last of the pay per view matches and really do that last type for Super Bowl. Um, so DBS comes down down to the ring to booze of the crowd as he officially hypes up that yes, Ric Flair. Has an injury to his rotator cuff, and W officials will not allow him to wrestle. Cubus, which means that unless W officials can get me suitable competition, I will be able to own this place. Half by time, Super Bowl is over, and that cues Dusty Rhodes of all people to come out to a big pop in the crowd, and he basically comes over. You know, you something DBS. Your father was a great man, DBS. You always been a walk behind it. You had men doing your dirty work from the moment you showed up. You had a rat pack. You had man servants, giants, and all the rest. But now you're on your own. You're watching me wrestling, and you had nobody to fight you except your own. So, question is, are you ready for a fight? You ask, he's like, why are you even still here? I need competition. I need a match for Super Bowl, and you're nothing but a color, color commentator. And Dusty says, well, I talked up to the officials. He said, for one more night, I can get funky like a monkey. Because it's true. I don't look as pretty as old Nature Boy does. This level still works. Now I'm ready to whoop you from one side of this arena till your black comes through if you're ready for it. Yep, he's like, thinks about it and says, basically, you know, it's over. Dusty, it's true, you're an old man now. Ooh, because everybody's the same age. But you are a former world champion. Which means W officials will probably counter sue me if I try to sue them. So, if you want to make your, you want to be permanently retired to save a man who did so many terrible things to your career, so be it. They'll just prove how much of a dumb redneck you always were. Boom, cue the brawl until W officials come down. So, yes, that means at Super Brawl, it's going to be, of all things, Teddy Biasi making his WCW debut to take it on the man he was. Oh shit. Ah shit. I thought. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, um, you saw that, which means I don't want to false challenge it, but I. I was like 99% sure I thought Dusty could. Actually, give me one second. Alright, I totally missed that Dusty, uh, was actually uh, not contracted to wrestle, so I'm going to have to figure out something for the pay per view. God damn it. Well, at least you guys get to see that I'm not for going from this booking. Anyway, Jack Rougeau defeats Stellar Santo in 14 to buy some mission to go back to this gets a 46, complete squash for Rougeau as he gets a 58. Uh, he basically called, you know, Bad comes out and says, you know, you, you know, I gotta kiss the miss, but you managed to outsmart me a little bit, but I'm a bad man, Jack, so I'll happily take you on at Super Bowl. 
course, since this isn't on TV, it will not be for the TV television championship. Yes, I know in real life WCW TV title much the pay-per-view. Well, I'm not WC real life WCW, am I? Aren't I? Uh, 55 perfectly solid, like, you know, set up for that. And then we have a quick backstage Hollywood Paul from him says, yes, we're not our own team anymore because we both got b bigger fish to fry. But for one night only, Hollywood Blondes are back together and ready to rip and tear apart Dustin Rhodes and that and that overgrown dork Sergeant Slaughter who thinks he's G.I. Joe still. Before we even face them at the pay-per-view. Ha ha ha. 70. Probably solid heel promo. And then we have a Steve Eagle in-ring. We're basically, you know, sort of the fact, you know, it's pathetic that I'm here in the ring tonight to face Brad, uh, a country star like Brad Armstrong. But a whooping will be administered tonight. And then at Super Bowl, there will be a tag match. And my men, Chris Benoit and Bobby Eaton, will take a part. These rocking countries one way or the other. So we got Chris Benoit, Bobby Eaton taking on Brad Armstrong and Marty J in an undercard tag match. And so this gets a 68, and then the actual match gets a 61, as Brad Armstrong sustained a confusion, confusion, which hopefully won't hurt him too badly. As Regal defeats Armstrong and 3-0 by pinball using the Rich Uh this gets a 61, Regal gets a 63, Brad Armstrong gets a 48. And I saw that as then there's a 3 on 2 beatdown, as Marnie Gianni tries to make the save, uh, but, you know, basically, you know, it's a 3-on-1 at that point, and he gets left for laying. It's not just a quarter effect that cross Atlantic Confederation will have the numbers game advantage at Super Brawl. And Manuel's gimmick is getting sealed, so I'll note that as well. Uh, then we have a big six-man match, uh, which, you know, goes to con continue to preview the paper. You guys match to 72. Scotty Flamingo, Vinny Vegas, and Rebrew defeat Ricky Steamboat and Scorpio and Simmons in 1336. <clears throat> Excuse me. When Flamingo pins Scorpio with a handful of tights, so, you know, rolling reverse cray to hold the tights, gets a pink pinfall victory as Ventura preserves the fact that, that happens at, at, at Super Bowl. Tony, Vinny Vegas, and Scotty Flamingo will be tight to ship as you can be proud of. So Rude gets an 81, Vegas gets a 52, Flamingo gets a 51, Simo gets a 79, Simo gets a 75, and Tupul gets a 61, Mash gets a crowd hotter, and the heel silver gets a 66. Then we have the big Vader Cactus Jack contract signing, which gets a 77, which Quite frankly, isn't quite as good as I wanted, but I probably made it a little too long. Let me just see here. No, okay, just okay. Interesting. Um. Anyway, you know they they go back and forth, and Cactus says, you know, you call this a fluke. Well, at Super, you know, in a couple, just a couple of days, Vader, I'm going. It's going to be another fluke when I pin you one, two, three. Vader says it's Vader time, and Cactus, you should have walked away when you could. You could have. Can you say you were world champion? And you got the win over me, but now, tonight, you're signing your death warrant. And I check my favorite for his back, says, Vader, 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 buddy, buddy, pal. I signed that first time I crashed in the concrete floor in front of these fans. I signed that when I got into this business. But I'm ready to fight until I'm laying, knocked out, unable to move to keep this title. But one thing is true. I made my side my death warrant. When I started this business, but you aren't the one would, you aren't be the one that signs it. Bang bang. There's a stir down. The answer put over the huge heavyweight title rematch at Super Brawl. Then in a match that gets an 83, which is probably going to be better than our main event, but what can you do? And about that fantastic, fantastic game of wrestling, Hollywood Blondes Raw with Dustin Woods and Sergeant Schaller in 1447 following a double count out. This gets an 83, Pillman gets an 84, Austin gets an 80, Slaughter and Rhodes both get 73. And just, you know, in all, you know, you know, Austin and Pillman do their heel shtick really well. You know, basically, Dustin gets a solo match, Slaughter comes in for some quick face heat segments, but eventually everything devolves down and it's a double count out as the entrance put over the two big matches. Or Super Brawl, and in the end, Slaughter is able to lock Austin in the Cobra Crutch as Pillman and Austin fight to the back to the cheers of the crowd as this gets a 69. And basically, we come back for commercial, and you know, we see you know, these two pictures of the uh, both the face and heel locker rooms as the announcers put over the fact that uh, that both the fan favorites and the Iron Horsemen have been both blocked from the ringside area tonight. So that the main event can go off without a hitch. So this gets a 74. It's just a quick, you know, look at, look at in both. 
at both sides of the heel to face divide. Then our Maven, which gets an 86, which I think is one of our better matches ever. And if I outside in Fantastic Heat and Grit Wrestling, Sting and Tsunami to beat Arn Anderson and the British Bulldog in 1854 when Sting pinned Arn Anderson. So again, back and forth, great matches you'd probably expect from both three of these. Well, two out of these four people, and there are two sometimes. Like, because, you know, Tenta's actually a pretty good worker, and Bulldog had his moments. Anyway, you know, back and forth, really just power pro styles. You know, Arn does his heel shooting stick, but Sting does his Sting, you know, does a press slam on Sting. Bulldog, you know, actually tits I imagine Bulldog some did some sort of big power spot with Tsunami as Sting with big vertical suplex. Everything devolves down, pure four brawl, but seeing he's able to get the big victory over Arn, probably in the Stinger Splash, and some sort of like, you know, big move off the like Stinger Splash or crossbody from the top. As this gets an 86, Sting gets the big one right before the pay-per-view. But as Sting gets up, Bulldog nails him from behind, picks him up, takes him to the corner, boom, running power slam right in the middle of the ring. He counts his own pin. As again, Jesse puts over the fact that Bulldog will get a huge win over Sting at Super Brawl and retain the international world title if he does that. 87 to finish things out, as we had an 84 overall. So really good. Um, really too bad that I completely effed up the uh, Dusty thing. But I'll see if I can do that, do a quick edit, and fix that up before we finish things off. This loads. Let's see here. Pillman thinks Eden doesn't connect to the fans. That's mean. Let's see here. Is Brad out? Out? Nope. Okay, he can walk through it. Cool. But yeah, getting his flares only out for three more days. So by the time basically the next, well, not quite the bet next TV, but almost the next TV, he'll be able to do something interesting. Um. But yeah, I'll be. So let me check one thing real quick. Yeah, I just double check, and there's no way to easily edit the uh, working, non-working things. So what I'm probably going to have to do is figure out a way to have a match without actually having a match. But hey, that'll just be interesting for you guys. Uh, but anyway, closing things out, but let's go over the shows it's seen so far. So we got um, in the main event for the heavyweight title, Captain Jack versus Vader rematch from Starcade. We got in a huge international world title match. Wait, did I? I never... Oh my god, I can't believe I, I, I completely forgot to do that after this team. Alright, and a match that should have gotten some hype to it, but I can believe. This has not been my best video, but anyway. Sting the British Bulldog for the international world title. Anyway, so, you know, Bulldog just turned heel to win that title, so we'll see if Sting can win, you know, Sting can win it back. We got, well, we can just remove that, unfortunately. Uh... We got Dustin Rosen and Brian Pillman, or a fight over who is the future of WCW. We got Eaton Benoit versus Rockman Country in what's, you know, their little feud that they've had. We had Recruit versus Ricky Steamboat, part 97, as Rude wants to move into the upper echelons of WCW. And Ricky Steamboat, of course, wants to prove he's, you know, one of the best wrestlers on the planet. And in continuation of the big babyface versus heel feud, we got Roger Rare Hawk and Tsunami continuing the team to take on Arn Anderson and Barry Windham from the Iron Horseman. And we also got Steve Austin coming for the U.S. title versus Sergeant Slaughter. The tag title match of Scorpion Simmons taking off Flamingo and Vinny Vegas. And the non-title match between Jack Rougeau versus Shining Bad. But of course, if Rougeau gets the win, he'll likely get a actual TV title shot. But yeah, that's it for now. Um, this has been a sort of like off weird finish. And with Flair getting injured, then before getting Dusty isn't ready for matches on TV. But the thing is, like, if you actually like look at our roster, there's nothing, no, there's nobody really else to give uh, DB Aussie, uh, like, because everybody else who's like a possibility are all heels. Like Sid isn't wrestling, but he's a heel. Um, Regal isn't wrestling, but he's also a heel. Uh, and then at that point, then you're down to like people like Barbarian. And yeah, like DiBiase's first match on paper, you shouldn't be against the Barbarian. So, you know, I'll figure out some way to get out of this. Um, you know, nothing in the world or anything. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this. And if you have, go ahead and give a like. Comment below on what you're enjoying and not enjoying. And subscribe channel for lots of TW2020 content including this series, my WW2001 series, now in 2004, and my my, my MLW2005 series, and of course my WWF 2013 series, uh, with random numbers random determining some goals for me to hit. But that's for now, so talk to you later, and audio. adios, have a good one.